there is a large section on the left who, I, I and I really do believe this, but I also do believe that this is coming from a place of genuine concern. And this is when you see a lot of people like Just Stop War, because they are honestly in the UK, they are the prime example of this, um, calling for a ceasefire and then that would that's it as if we just stop fighting and, and that's it and and somehow everyone just gets overwhelmed by this loving sense of peace because we've given it a chance and it all rains down on us forever and everything is is solved all the problems just go away everything is solved no <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not the case. And to be honest, I really do have to say to a lot of people, I think a lot of people are doing this because a lot of, again, a lot of emotions are running high at the moment. And, and I would say, while that is a good thing, it does show a lot of, you know, people have a lot of passion for this. The problem is you don't see sustained passion because people call for it. They then get disheartened. Um, and then they end up not, really joining the fight for uh, that cause which they were so passionate about because they then get really disheartened by it. And that becomes the problem of the organizers who are organizing this, which is, of course, the Just Stop War Coalition. And I will give you the perfect example of this in Ukraine because Ukraine symbolizes their unwillingness to acknowledge the reality of what is going on and that oh if we just have a ceasefire putin will uh, just stop fighting and he'll leave ukraine <laughs> but before we do go uh, getting to this please do remember to click on the like share and subscribe button and of course down below there are links to my patreon page and on a link called buy me coffee where you can well buy me coffee and of course as always thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way there's of course the youtube thank you button and of course there is the uh, pony club down below as well so right when the ukraine war started this whole section was saying first of all they were very skeptical uh, because it was us intelligence and this is the the part of the left that has not only just been skeptical of U.S. intelligence, but downright just dismissing of U.S. intelligence. That these warnings that Russia was about to invade Ukraine should just be ignored. It's not going to happen. These are being carried out by by hawks. And of course, what happened? <laughs> you know, Russia invaded Ukraine. And since the very beginning of it. They just started calling for a ceasefire, that there should be a ceasefire, there should be negotiations. And I say this to every single time, because I'm not the only one saying this, there are other YouTubers who look at sort of politics and, and foreign affairs who have said this from the very beginning. Why are you calling for a ceasefire? Russia isn't interested in a ceasefire. It's original war aims and goals that it had during those first couple of weeks when it was actually interested in having negotiations was you give us everything we want and we'll leave you alone and let me re-emphasize what everything they want was it was Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, uh, Odessa pretty much all of the Ukrainian coastline, which would have crippled them economically, probably, uh, I, oh yeah, they wanted the Zelensky regime gone um, and a friendly regime installed, uh, <laughs> which might mean, <coughs> pardon me, which might mean uh, the bringing back of uh, Yanukovych, uh, the, obviously the prime minister who, who well, did a runner, uh, well, he ran off to Russia, um, it would probably mean maybe the permanent positioning of, of Russian soldiers in, in what is left of, of, of Ukraine, probably further down the line, even more taking of, of territory. And if the Ukrainian people do protest like they did in the Euromaidan, then guess what will happen? Russia will send in its troops. This is what they do for other countries. They do it for Belarus. They've done it for Kazakhstan. 
they prop up the regimes which are friendly to them. And next time, if the Ukrainian people protest on that mass scale, well, it won't be uh, police that are putting down or, or at least trying to uh, stop these these protesters. It will be Russian, you know, soldiers. To be honest, they don't have, shall we say, a very good track record when it comes to that. And even more recently, you have had in Malta, just the past couple of weeks, you actually had a peace summit. Russia was invited. Russia did not attend. Why? Because Zelensky is saying, here's my 10-point peace proposal. And I think this is what we in the West need to push for. We need to go, this is the proposal. This is what we are backing. This is how the war ends with this 10-point proposal. And until then, if you don't, well, hey, maybe we should consider going to full wartime production to help, help supply and arm Ukraine. Because Russia ain't interested in talking. Russia wants the territory it wants. If it did get a ceasefire, or it, it wanted sort of a ceasefire, it would probably mess about. It would um, prepare. It would waste time while it was reshoring up its defenses. It would dig more trench lines, lay more mines, um, potentially to try and further freeze the line of conflict and just go, hey, this land's ours. Um, tough luck. That's what it wants to happen. And that should not be allowed to happen because eventually they will try again maybe in like 10 or 15 years when it thinks, you know, everything is cooled down and, you know, people aren't watching anymore. But just stop war, just go, oh, look, if we have a ceasefire in Ukraine, uh, Putin will, 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 will sit down and, 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 and that'll be it. We'll, we'll, we'll negotiate something. <laughs> Again, the worrying part is the something um, and it'll all be peace. And that's the Ukraine situation. Now, we look at the current uh, Israel-Hamas war that is going on at the moment. You are seeing a lot of calls for ceasefire. But a ceasefire for what? Are we going to call a ceasefire for human humanitarian reasons? That's when we see a lot of calls for. So what? You convince Israel and Hamas to have a ceasefire that these humanitarian aid supplies come in, how then do you know that Hamas is not going to then seize those humanitarian supplies and during those two weeks build up more defences, tunnels, traps for the Israelis? And then why are the Israelis probably going to... The Israelis are probably going to spend that next couple of weeks bringing more troops and equipment uh, towards Gaza. They are doing that because, of course, it is a right-wing government. They have been heavily embarrassed and they want to reassert that their, their you know strong dominance narrative uh, that they have going on the honest reality is at the moment neither side is interested in a ceasefire and i think this is going to lead to a lot of people feeling really powerless and this is why the i, I say to the video that the, the the title is a ceasefire then what what comes next? What should happen after that ceasefire is called? And you see none of these people calling for what should happen next. I think we should be bringing back the Oslo Accords. We need to be marshalling a United Nations um, pushback on this. We don't only just need to sort of push Israel and Hamas into calling for peace, but we need to get Iran on board to try and rein in Hamas. And then we also need to get uh, Israel and especially America on board to pressure Israel into going into a ceasefire so that there then can be some proper negotiations that then can take place. And until that happens, you know, call for a ceasefire all you want, but you really need to start thinking about, okay, you get a ceasefire, then what? Because that is what you do not see from a lot of these these organizations like Just Stop War campaigning at the moment against uh, what's going on in the Middle East. There is no solid plan for what comes after. Like I say, 
you look at the example we gave with Ukraine. There are solid examples to go and follow on from, but they don't even seem to want to engage in that. So, <laughs> as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.